So this is the week in between. The week in between Christmas and the New Year. And today's Thursday. It's December 29th. Yep, December 29th. And I am feeling so happy because the sun is out. Let me let me show you. Let me just see if I can turn this around. Can you see that blue sky? It feels amazing. <laughs> it has been so we had sun yesterday, but it sun huh, sun this time of year. Oh, it's few and far between. Did I tell you why? I I knew it had something to do with the mountain ranges around us. But um, friends of ours who are pilots told us it's because Western Pennsylvania is in a bowl. Like geographically, we sit down into a bowl and we're surrounded by mountain ranges. And so the clouds always kind of settle into that bowl. And unless there is, until there is like a strong, I guess, air current to come and push the clouds out, we just kind of sit under all those clouds. <laughs> But uh, oh, I am feeling so good today with the blue skies. Um, yes, I'm just going to take it in. In fact, I think it's supposed to be maybe near 50 today, which is crazy. So I'm going to go outside. I've been out getting out for walks, and uh, you will have seen that, or you will see that, depending on how I edit this vlog together. But... Um, yeah, we've been going on some walks to an area that's several minutes from our home. <clears throat> so thankful for that area. It's just a beautiful place. It's got the stream and it's really pretty right now because of the snow and the ice. So yeah, thought I would hop on here and just have a little chat with you all. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. So I really enjoyed Vlogmas. It's, it's definitely a time commitment. It's a big time commitment. And that's what sometimes, that's what's hard, the time commitment. But at the same time, I really like doing it. I like filming it. I think by filming the moments of my day, I actually end up being more mentally present in my day. Because, so you go throughout your day and you're doing your everyday routine and you're busy and you have lots of distractions and interruptions. But when I'm filming, I'm always looking for those moments of like, um, coziness or beauty or just the little moments that make me stop and say, Hmm, that's definitely a blessing or that's definitely a gift and wow I'm thankful for that and so because of that I really like vlogging <laughs> that's not the only reason but I just noticed I'm really see you would think it would be the opposite that it, when I'm filming I would be less involved in what I'm doing and and in some ways it is because you know you're having the interruption of setting up your camera and switching angles and all that and that's what happens when you vlog you know but at the same time, it just feels so good to capture those beautiful moments and then put them all together. And so it kind of like makes a memory. And I feel like one day I'm going to really appreciate that <laughs> going back and watching those moments. So I'm thinking, and I almost hate to say it because I don't want to be held to it, but I'm thinking I'd like to continue doing vlogs throughout the winter months, especially throughout the winter months, because those are the months that are hardest for me because I am inside more and it is cold out and we don't have a lot of sun and it's just naturally harder for me who, who I am a very, I'm very much a summer loving sun seeking girl. <laughs> I'm learning as I age to appreciate all the seasons more. I, I truly am. But, you know, I also struggle with some seasonal affective stuff. So this time of year is not the easiest time of year for me. And so I'm thinking that maybe vlogging, taking the time to do that, um, might be a beneficial thing for me. And so I, I'm, I'm setting the intention of doing that. 
also knowing that if it gets to be too much, then I won't continue with it because I need to do what is going to be best for myself and my family and keeping myself in good shape <laughs> is what's best for my family. So, uh, but I would like to do more vlogging and I don't know how often that will be, but I think it's, I think it's something that will be a, a good practice for me through the winter months. So, and speaking of, of intentions, do you all set new year's goals, resolutions? I'm honestly not a resolutions girl. I don't think I've ever been a resolutions girl. <laughs> I I try to stay pretty practical in my thinking and maybe that's why I like goals and I like to set intentions, but I also like to leave myself room to um manipulate things that aren't working for me or to tweak things and so I don't set hard and fast New Year's resolutions. In 2020, so when we were transitioning from 2019 to 2020, a friend of mine um, gave me a book to read. Okay, so here's, here's the book, One Word That Will Change Your Life. It has three different authors. And the premise of this book is that you pick a word and that is going to be the word that you focus on through the coming year. Now this is, this is written from a Christian perspective. So, you know, it's, they, the authors state like, don't just randomly pick a word. Some people do that. There's like random word generators where you can just pick a word. This is supposed to be like an, a prayerful, intentional word seeking exercise. And then you use that word throughout your year. So I think this was an, I, I was, I think it was 2021. I was thinking it was 2019 into 2020, but now that I'm thinking, I think it was 2020 transitioning into 2021. Um, and I picked the word abundant. That was the word that I thought of. And then that year, and I, when that word came to mind, I was like, oh, this is a nice positive word. I like this word. <laughs> And then that year was tough. I mean, tough for the, everybody was having a tough year uh, with, you know, everything going on with the pandemic and all of that. But then also personal things. There were some personal things in our lives that were really tough. And so as that year came to a close, I said, I am not doing that again. I am not picking a word. <laughs> I'm done with that. Uh, my friend asked me, she's like, are you going to pick a word? I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not picking a word. Don't ask me to pick a word. So going into this year, I did not have a word of the year and I was fine. I had nothing come to mind. And so I was like, eh, I'm just not doing it. I have no desire to have a word of the year. However, that same friend asked me last month, are you doing a word for the year? And I, I said, no, I'm not doing a word for a year. You know how I feel about that. And then it was that day or the next day she started talking about Psalm one. And that was a, that was a passage of scripture that the kids and I had memorized earlier in our homeschooling day. And basically part of it says, blessed is the man whose delight is in the Lord and on his word. He meditates day and night. And I was like, Oh, Oh no, I think I am going to have a word for the year. And it wasn't something like I went seeking, but it was something that laid on my heart. And I was like, delight. Delight is going to be a word. It's going to be my word for the year. So delighting in God's word, God, the gifts he's given us, the, the little, all, there's so many things to delight in. I go out in nature and I am, I'm just like, so there's so much to delight in. When we were walking down at, um, that area that I was telling you about, there were just these beautiful birds were just flitting around and I'm just like, Oh my gosh, I'm just delighting in these birds. They just, they just don't really, they just do their thing, you know? And yeah, so there's, there's a lot to delight in. And I feel like that is a good place to put my mental energy looking for things to delight in. So I am 
doing a one word for this coming year. We'll see what happens. While I'm on here, I just want to show you a couple of projects. Okay, so I finished my prayer shawl, except I was finishing this last night as Brad and I were watching a movie and I was binding off and I didn't realize I ran out of yarn for my bind off. And so I had some long strands from where I had to tie in my next skein. And so I cut those off and I used those for a bind off, but it only got me halfway through because it is a, it's a, it's a big shawl. And this is the prayer shawl I'm making for my neighbor. So I need to either rip back or what I'm going to do first though, is look through all my scrap yarn and see if I can find a yarn that is close to this, that I can just use for the rest of this bind off. Cause I literally only have the one side of the shawl, like the first half, the first side is bound off. It's the second half that needs. And I used, uh, uh, well, I, I kind of used the age of brass and steam. I used it just to get me going. And then I used the, uh, eyelet sections, but I spread them out how I wanted them. And then I just did a, um, garter Ridge border all along the bottom. So I need to go through my stash yarn and hopefully fingers crossed. I find a color that is close enough to this that I don't have to undo. I don't want to have to undo it, especially I don't, I really don't want to have to undo the part that I already bound off, but if I have to, I will. And then, okay, every winter, every winter, and I'll talk more of this, about these projects and my other projects, because I have multiple ones going on my actual knitting episodes, but I just want to show you, I'm making a pair of thrummed mittens because every winter I say I'm making myself thrummed, thrummed mittens because that is the one piece of winter clothing that I don't have, like, a good set of. I have everything else. I, I'm really warm, but my hands are often cold. And so this year I just did it. Brad and I went for a walk on Monday, the day after Christmas, and it was like eight degrees out and we were all bundled up. And I mean, my face was cold cause it was exposed, but my hands were what was bothering me. So I left that, we came home from that walk and I immediately wound up my yarn. And this is like a Quince Co. I think it's owl in the Kestrel colorway. And, um, I would not recommend this pattern to a beginner knitter or someone who's not familiar with mitten construction. And I'll like, I don't want to get into all the logistics of the knitting because that I'm going to save for an actual knitting podcast, but I just wanted to show you and it's so soft inside. I have a big box of this like gray toned white. Um, I think this is Merino and I've had this for years in my fiber stash. And so I'm just using that to do the little thrums. But yeah, they're slightly time consuming because you have to pull off all the pieces for the thrums and then add them in. But um, these will be so nice, so nice to have for these, for the really cold days. So I'm going to close here, friends. Oh, but before I go, I want to thank you guys so much for your, uh, of course, I want to thank you. I want to thank you guys so much for all of your comments and kindness and, um, contributions and just, I very, very much appreciate them all. <sighs> and you guys are part of the reason that I want to keep vlogging because it just, I don't know. I like having the interaction with you all. So I appreciate, I appreciate your kindness and your encouragement so much. Brad's working half a day today. And then I am hoping we can get outside and maybe go for another walk because it is absolutely beautiful out. So, all right. Talk to you later.
Happy December 30th. I know that. <laughs> Brad, you're horrible. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> you, you guys you have are your, seeing it. You, you have your stand setting on a loaf of bread. I'm just like, hey, I'm sorry. I, I, I started. Listen, it's, I, I know. I do. I do. I, was, I love this little <laughs> tripod. She loves her little loaf of bread. You you can like wrap it around tree branches. Loaves of bread, yeah. Apparently. Anyway, uh, that bread. is not how I was intending this conversation to start, but we'll go with it. So today is Friday, December thirtieth, and um, Brad has been off work all week except for yesterday. He had to work half a day, but we're gonna go this morning. We're gonna go to um, a kind of nearby town. I've explained before. We have multiple towns that are about forty to forty five minutes from us. And we're going to uh, one of those. We're going to go visit a coffee shop there that um, it's called Vintage Coffee House. And I mm -hmm. actually used to work with Angela. Her and her husband started up this coffee shop over the summer. And she had worked at East BRA for a short time, just kind of learning the ropes before they opened their own. So we haven't been there yet. We're going to go check that out this morning. And um, I'm going to take you guys along.